Hi, I'm Brett Stafford and this is RegWatch by RegulatorWatch.com. Should the CRTC regulate internet service providers to ensure an open internet for Canadians? If not, would the future include ever more penalizing data caps, slower bandwidth, outrageous pricing, and even content censorship? Joining us today to discuss the state of affairs with the open internet is David Christopher from OpenMedia.ca, an advocacy group on the front lines of the battle for net neutrality in Canada. David, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. First off, the federal courts in the U.S. say the internet service providers are utility. Is that true here in Canada? Um, here in Canada, we do actually have pretty strong uh, net neutrality rules. Uh, this U.S. court ruling is uh, uh, pretty historic, certainly for U.S. Uh, internet users, uh, because it upheld uh, what are really some of the strongest net neutrality rules in the world. So what is net neutrality then, and how does it benefit Canadians to have it? Sure. Net neutrality is, is uh, pretty much the idea that all data on the internet should be treated equally. Basically, it means that you, as an internet consumer, uh, should have the right to pick and choose exactly which apps and services and websites you want to use on the internet without your telecom provider getting in the way. It puts power in the hands of the consumer uh, rather than in the hands of the uh, telecom company. So when you say picking and choosing winners, what do you mean by that? We're talking about, first of all, there's, there's the, obviously the home telco, which is your ISPs, mm -hmm. your Shaw's and your Rogers and all that kind of stuff. And then you have, of course, the wireless provider too, where you also get the internet. Is there any difference between the two and different ways in which they might be you know, infringing on open internet? Yeah, the big difference that most consumers experience, especially here in Canada, is that on wireless we have extremely low data caps uh, when it comes to our, uh, compa compared with our international counterparts. Uh, we produced a report last week uh, that shows just how raw a deal uh, Canadians are getting. Uh, for example, it's impossible uh, to get an unlimited wireless cell phone plan uh, here in Canada from any of the big three uh, providers. When you've got these very oppressively low data caps, they come with very steep extortionate uh, overage charges and so it puts the consumer in a very tight position. What we've seen some companies here in Canada start to do uh, is start to, for example, say, well, if you want to use music streaming service A rather than music streaming service B, we won't count that against your data cap. But isn't that because they've got a deal with that service provider? Exactly. It means they've. But what's wrong with that, though? It's, it means they they often have struck a deal. Not not in every case. Uh, it, it's uh, it's a good question because on the face of it, it seems like that might be a good thing for the consumer. But what it's really doing is it's artificially pushing consumers uh, towards one service over another service. So it's tilting the market unfairly. Uh, it means the telecom provider is the one deciding effectively which music streaming service you should listen to or what video streaming service you should watch or even in an extreme case which websites can load slower than other well, websites. But that's different though, yep. yeah, that's different. The difference is because the role of the telecom provider should be to provide the pipe through which you access uh, the internet. Now if for example a telecom provider wanted to give you let's say a free subscription uh, to uh, let's say Spotify or to Apple Music as part of the deal, nothing wrong with that. But having that service not count against your data cap does artificially force uh, consumers uh, to choose one music service over another um, and also sets an incredibly bad uh, precedent when it comes to the wider digital economy uh, because uh, if you think about things when you, if you think about the internet, one of the greatest things about it is it's seen as an engine of innovation. Uh, we've seen all these innovative new companies uh, spring up over the past 10 years. Uh, even here in Vancouver, we've seen like Hootsuite, for example. Uh, but 10 years ago, Twitter was barely, uh, uh, didn't even exist. Facebook, I think, was just getting going. Uh, you can think 10 years from now and imagine what kind of innovative new services uh, will have arisen by then. The problem if we undermine net neutrality rules, if we artificially tilt the market so that powerful incumbents are, are privileged uh, uh, that in, in the sense that customers are being driven toward them, it makes it impossible to see how the next Netflix, the next Spotify, the next Uber, the next great idea could ever really get off the ground. In your mind, how then do you see the telcos being able to compete and make money if 
we're supposed to like you know put all these regulations on them to the extent that we tell them what they can sell, how much of it they can sell, and what they sell it for. I don't think what anyone is looking for here is for the CRTC to come in with a whole pile of, uh, of regulations. What is really needed is simply a framework, a level playing field on which all the telecom providers know clearly what the rules are and then they can compete with each other in terms of price, in terms of say the quality of service, the quality of their customer service, the range of uh, things they can uh, compete on. Uh, but really uh, they should just get out of the business of trying to force consumers uh, down certain paths on the internet. So don't do any deals or promotions or offer any incentives that's wrapped around anything that's carried over their pipes, but compete on how good their pipe is. That's exactly it. I but think isn't you have that it the in speed the issue then? Um, this but isn't that exactly what they're asking for is the ability to, is to get financing, to be able to increase the ability for their pipe to be better? Um, that, that's the fast lane and the slow lane. That's the whole issue about why they want to have the fast lane is they need that money to then further go into innovation and make their pipe better. Yeah, sure, the whole issue of, and this is I think maybe more on uh, when it comes to wired internet, home broadband, the issue of this sort of internet fast lane versus internet slow lane, that was really at the core of the FCC's uh, hearing last year in the States. It was that the, those are the rules that the Federal Court of Appeal just upheld a week ago. Uh, and really when uh, people started thinking about that, they realized actually we don't want slow lanes on the internet. If you've got a fast lane, you've got to have a slow lane. Yeah hopeful with the CRTC this fall? I am because uh, you know I think we've seen in recent years that the CRTC is increasingly uh, putting the interests of consumers on at least an equal uh, basis uh, to the interests of the big telecom companies. Uh, we've seen a very positive shift I think under Jean-Pierre Blais uh, certainly compared with his uh, predecessors. Uh, I think a big criticism of the CRTC, let's say five years ago, is that they really did uh, respond much more to the interests of the telecom companies, almost saw their role as protecting the interests of the telecom companies, and consumers were losing out. There's been a real rebalancing in recent years. I think we've seen that with the wireless code. Uh, we've seen that with the uh, implementation of pick and pay TV, flawed as, as that was, uh, and as unhappy as many people are. Uh, but I do think they are, they are open to listening to everyday Canadians now. Uh, and that's, we see at Open Media, our role is really gonna be channeling, rallying as many people as possible to go and uh, take part uh, in this uh, consultation.